everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the 1915i Electronic Visit Verification System Public Comment and Informational Session. My name is Dawn Pearson. I am a 1915i Program Administrator within the Medical Services Division of the North Dakota Department of Human Services. I work alongside Melissa Clocky with the Medical Services Division and Nicole Berman with the Behavioral Health Division on the development and implementation of the 1915i State Plan Amendment for home and community-based behavioral health services. Nancy Nicholas Meyer is the department's subject matter expert on electronic visit verification and we are fortunate to have her in the audience today. Nancy will be available at the end of the presentation to answer questions or offer clarification as needed. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. This presentation is being recorded. Everyone has been muted to reduce background noise. This PowerPoint, as well as the recording, will be posted online via the 1915i Behavioral Health website. So why are we hosting this public comment session? The state's new 1915i State Plan Amendments Respite Service is subject to electronic visit verification requirements. As a result, we are hosting this public comment session. Federal regulations require states to seek comment and input from stakeholders to ensure that an electronic visit verification system is minimally burdensome, considers best practices in use in the state, is conducted in accordance with HIPAA privacy and security law, assures providers are provided opportunity for training on the use of, e of the EBV system, our main goal for today's session is to provide you with opportunity to provide your comments on the state's electronic visit verification system and implementation plan. As we go through today's presentation, please consider all the points on this slide as you prepare to provide public comments. So here is a overview of the presentation today. Um, the federal, we plan to provide you with a brief overview of the Medicaid 1915i state plan amendment for home and community-based behavioral health services, and also share information on the federal EBV requirements and what it will mean for you as a 1915i respite provider. And most importantly, to provide you with the opportunity to submit your public comments regarding the electronic visit verification system and the state's implementation plan. Please hold your questions until the end of the presentation. At that time, I will invite you to submit any questions via the chat box. I will also provide you with instructions on how to submit your public comments. So as I mentioned, I'd like to first provide a brief overview of what 1915i home and community based behavioral health services are. So you have some context behind your public comments. North Dakota has defined 1915i home and community based behavioral health services as services designed to support individuals with overcoming barriers in their social and physical environments that may limit the individual's ability to gain or maintain access to life in the greater community. In the past, individuals with more complex needs would have limited options for accessing care in the community of their choice. 
Last legislative session, North Dakota lawmakers recognized this concern and authorized the Department of Human Services to create this Medicaid 1915-I state plan amendment. When the amendment is approved by our federal partners, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, also known as CMS, it will allow North Dakota Medicaid to pay for home and community-based services to support individuals with behavioral health conditions, including mental illness, substance use disorder, and brain injury. So when we talk about the 1915-I home and community-based services, we are referring to an umbrella term for the 12 services you see on the slide that make up the 1915-I service package. Uh, the 1915-I services are care coordination, training and supports for unpaid caregivers, community transition services, benefits planning, non-medical transportation, respite, family peer support, peer support, pre-vocational training, supported education, supported employment, and housing support services. We are very excited to bring these services to North Dakota. And note that the respite service is highlighted on the slide, as this is the specific service we will focus on today because enrolled Medicaid 1915-I respite providers will use an electronic visit verification system to electronically verify by a phone or computer-based system that respite services were provided. The EVV, which is short for Electronic Visit Verification System, also records the actual time a respite provider begins and ends the service. And for further information on 1915i services, again, please visit our behavioral health website at this location. And you can view the 1915i services orientation training for a, a detailed um, overview of the services. Okay, quickly, who will receive 1915i services? Those individuals must be eligible for Medicaid or Medicaid expansion. Um, age zero plus, the, the individual age varies by service. They must have the behavioral health qualifying diagnosis, uh, HUDA's assessment score of 50 or above, and they must be living in a home and community-based setting. And who will provide these services? 1915i services are Medicaid state plan services. To provide 1915i services, providers are required to complete the 1915i Medicaid provider enrollment process. And for further information on enrolling as a 1915i provider, visit the Behavioral Health 1915i website and view the 1915i provider enrollment training. Okay. I also want to provide you with a brief project status. Where are we at with the 1915-I? The department continues to make progress on the implementation of the 1915-I. Recently, we hosted an online orientation for 1915-I provider enrollment. Just yesterday, we provided an orientation to 1915-I service delivery and services. Today, we are hosting this public input session regarding electronic visit verification systems. And later this month or early October, we plan to host an orientation on 1915i provider billing, claims and service authorizations. 
Um, implementation of the 1915-I is pending approval from CMS. A uh, little history here in April, the department submitted the 1915-I state plan amendment application to CMS and federal rules indicate that CMS has 90 days to either approve the SPA or issue a request for additional information. Well, lo and behold, on the 89th day, um, North Dakota, us, we did receive a request for additional information. So per federal rules, uh, the department has 90 days to respond to the request for additional information. However, we plan to submit our response to CMS soon. And then the time clock for CMS starts again. They will have another 90 days to either approve the SPA or issue another request for additional information. And this process of going back and forth between DHS and CMS will continue until CMS approves the state plan amendment. In the meantime, we continue to write policy, provide trainings, and are engaged in a multi multitude of other implementation efforts. Okay, so let's move into the electronic visit verification section of the presentation. Hopefully with the, the context you were given in the previous slides, um, the EVV is going to make a little more sense. Um, the following slides will answer these questions. What is electronic visit verification? Why do we need it? Who needs to use it? And when will it start? Okay, what is an electronic visit verification system? It is used to electronically verify that personal care and home health services and other home and community based services are being provided. The EVV system must verify the type of service performed, the individual receiving the service, the date of the service, the location of service delivery, the individual providing the service, and the time the service begins and ends. And why do we need an electronic visit verification system? Um, this is a very long answer. I've tried to summarize here. Um, the Office of Inspector General completed um, many audits and evaluation reports focusing on personal care services beginning in 2006. And that study found some personal care payments were improper due to several different reasons, possibly not provided in compliance with state requirements, unsupported by documentation indicating the service had been rendered. Some were provided during periods when the beneficiary was in a hospital or a nursing home. While these are home and community based services and can't be provided there and others were provided by attendants who did not meet state qualification requirements. And again, I'm not referencing North Dakota. This was a nationwide study. So the Office of Inspector General concluded that there were inadequate, inadequate controls to ensure appropriate payment and quality of care and made several recommendations. The 21st Century Cures Act was signed into law in December 2016, requiring electronic visit verification of Medicaid funded home and personal home health and personal care services, which require an in-home visit. In addition, the Fair Labor Standards, Standards Act was passed, and that is a law that, govern, that governs workers' wage and overtime protections. So the rules regarding how this applies to home care workers has been updated, and the law now requires that most home care care workers, including some individual qualified service providers, be paid at least minimum wage and overtime for all hours worked over 40 hours per week. 
And this includes the time spent traveling between clients. So the, the EDV system will also be used to document and track the time in-home providers spend providing services and traveling between clients for purposes of the Fair Labor Standards Act compliance. So who needs to use electronic visit verification? Medicaid providers of personal care services and home health care services. In the case of the 1915-I, enrolled Medicaid providers of the respite service will need to use the electronic visit verification. Um, just to give you a broad overview of the large impact of this electronic visit verification legislation, um, these are all the programs within North Dakota that um, were affected or impacted by this and are in the process of implementation. I won't read through them, but in the end, you can see here the 1915-I state plan amendment, which is the reason we are here today. So uh, the categories of Medicaid funded services requiring electronic visit verification, again, are the personal care services and home health care services. So the definition of personal care service, um, it consists of services supporting activities of daily living, ADL, such as movement, bathing, dressing, toileting, transferring, and personal hygiene offer support for instrumental activities of daily living, such as meal prep, money management, shopping, and telephone use. As mentioned earlier, the EBV federal regulations apply to the 1915-I respite service because it falls within this personal care service definition. So I included this slide. It's states do have the option of going above and beyond. Um, EBV is only required for the portion of the service rendered in the home. However, states may choose to go above and beyond and require more information to control fraud, waste, and abuse. Um, we won't get into that, but this slide as well as the recording will be available on the website for your viewing. OK, a little bit about the 1915 I respite services. Um, they are provided to participants unable to care for themselves. They're furnished on a short term basis because of the absence or need for relief of persons who normally provide care for the participant. And I may just be doing a little plug for all of you out there who may be considering becoming respite providers because that would be very exciting to us. So another slide on respite care services for the 1915-I. The activities include assistance with daily living skills, Assistance with grooming and personal hygiene, meal prep, serving and cleanup, administration of medication, supervision, recreational and leisure activities, and assistance with accessing, transporting to and from community activities. So as you can see, these activities would place the 1959 respite service within the definition of personal care services requiring the electronic visit verification. And please note that the EBV requirements will apply to both traditional Medicaid fee for service clients and Medicaid expansion administered through Sanford Health Plan, a managed care organization, and the clients receiving respite through the I will the EBV will be applicable for.
OK, respite service must be provided in an approved HCBS setting, such as a private home, for example, furthering the need for electronic visit verification. Um, please note that 1915 I respite services cannot be provided in a nursing facility, institution for mental disease, IMD, hospitals or other locations that have qualities of an institutional setting. OK. Now that we've talked a little bit about the I and about the respite service, um, the implementation deadline for electronic visit verification. Um, for implementation deadline for states was January 1st, 2020 for personal care services and January 1, 2023 for home health services. However, North Dakota was granted a good faith exception, which extended the deadline for personal care services to January 1st, 2021. Um, that is coming up real quick. And any services provided without EVV after this deadline will reduce a state's federal medical assistance percentage, our FMAP. OK, here's a timeline for the electronic visit verification requirements. Um, note we talked about the Fair Labor Standards Act and the 21st Century Cares Act. Um, there have been previous public input and planning meetings. Throughout the department. Um, note that procurement was completed um, and we'll talk a little more about um, the results of that. Um, CMS APD approval, um, personal care service EVV implementation on January 21st, and the home health care implementation on January 2023. So much work has been in progress. Um, further rules that we had to follow when choosing an EVV system. Um, we had to make certain no employer employee relationship may be construed by the required use of an EVV system. No particular or uniform EVV system is required by the federal government. Um, the EVV is not meant to impede the way in which care is delivered and no prohibition on state's ability to establish quality measures for the EVV system. And what would an ideal EVV system look like? First and foremost, verify that the visit took place. Confirm that the caregiver provided the care they were authorized to provide document the activities performed during the visit, improve ability to respond to audit requests, improve audit outcomes, reduce manual effort, assist with documentation, and produce and submit a clean claim. OK, so North Dakota's choice of EBV model. And it is an open hybrid model, and the definition of that is states contract with a single EBV vendor, but allow providers to use other vendors if they agree to use the state's data aggregator. So states maintain oversight and receive funding for implementation while also allowing vendor choice for providers who already have an EVV system in place. The state contracted vendor in-house system serves as the default system for the state. Um, there is no charge for providers who use the state system. Providers who choose to use their own electronic 
visit verification system must agree to send the information to the state's data aggregator. So our state's EVV system contract was awarded to Therap Services. And there were many reasons behind that. Um, DHS has contracted with Therap for a case management system since 2010. Um, the system is currently used by DD and medical services and does include an EV function that meets federal requirements and is available to current users for a nominal fee. So um, referencing back to the 1915I, um, we also will be using Therap as we are joining the current DHS Therap contract. It will be amended to, to welcome us into the contract. So here's um, additional information on the Therap EVV system. Um, Therap's long-term system and support software assists providers in collecting data from the point of service by the person who is directly providing the services. So scheduling and EVV check-in options include the web, a mobile application such as Android, or an iOS device, offline application, and interactive voice response. And an explanation of the data aggregator I referenced a few slides back, that is a system that collects and compiles EVV data from various sources. Um, it will it must produce uniform data and reports and may be used to pay claims, um, supports audit functions, and send alerts, etc. So the last I was updated, the, the aggregator is being chosen via the request for proposal process. And Nancy may have a, a better update for us than I do. Okay, we are nearing the end of the presentation. Um, we do want to bring your attention to the North Dakota Department of Human Services website where we do have um, other PowerPoint presentations, other federal resources on the electronic visit verification. So please visit there for additional information. Okay, so nearing the end of the presentation, we want to start talking about the public comments that we're looking for. So here are some questions for your consideration when submitting your public comments. Um, we're very interested to know how much interest is there from agencies to use the state's EVV system? Do agency and individual providers have access to smart devices such as a smartphone or tablet? Do agency and individual providers have access to a landline or regular cell phones? What is the best way to verify the client was present during the home visit? What is the best way to provide training to providers about the use of an EVV system? And what is the best way to educate consumers about the use of an EVV system? So a reminder, um, states must seek comments and input from stakeholders such as yourself to ensure that the system is minimally burdensome, considers best practices in use in the state, 
is conducted in accordance with HIPAA practice or HIPAA privacy and security law. Assures providers are provided opportunity for training on the use of the EVV system. So we take the public's input very seriously and we have come up with uh, several options for you to submit your public comments. Um, you will see we have an, a link to the website where you can submit public comments. You can mail them to the Behavioral Health Division at the address provided. Um, you can email Nicole Berman at the Behavioral Health Division and we also have um, toll free telephone numbers and fax. So we wanted to provide all types of ways to submit. And the deadline for submission of public comments is October 5th at 5 o'clock Central Time. So thank you for attending today's presentation. The recording of this presentation will be placed on the Behavioral Health 1915i website. And a uh, quick note while visiting the website, please make sure to sign up to receive all 1915i related notices and to access all related resources, including this training and all other trainings provided to date. So we are going to um, open up the chat box and on mute individuals who have any questions on the public comment process. So Melissa, could you on mute please? Okay, I. Don, this is Krista. Did you see? Um, I don't know if you'd like me to just read the questions from the chat. That would be excellent. And is Nancy with us today? If not, I will do my best to answer the questions. Otherwise, we will take the question and find the response and get back to them as quickly as possible. So go ahead. OK, so the first question is how much is the fee for therap? To be used for EVV and when would we have access to that? Oh goodness, I see Nancy is having trouble getting off of mute. Um, can you help her out, Melissa? So, Don, maybe um, I think as far as the fee for therapy goes, that is not something that the provider would be responsible for paying, if I understand correctly, right? Yeah, and Nancy's confirming that. Um, so the state is going live with EVV on January 1st of 2021. And so um, that is the point when 1915 I respite providers would need to start using the EVV. Um, OK, that was confusing given the comment saying available for a nominal fee. I guess I I must have missed that. I'm not exactly sure, but um, the providers will not be needing to pay a fee. So hopefully that clears it up. Uh, 
I don't see any other questions in the chat, although I don't know if people are having trouble unmuting themselves. If you are, then you'll need to submit your questions in the chat. Otherwise, we won't be able to see them. Krista, can you hear me or am I muted? I can hear you. OK, all right. So um, Wendy Dannenfelser says the nominal fee may be for the devices if a smartphone was not available, correct, Nancy? Um, and I, th I think that this kind of depends on which, which route the agency chooses to go. I mean, if they already have their own system, then they would use that. But if they're going to use the Therap system, um, my understanding is that the state would not be providing like the smartphones for that. Nancy still can't get off mute, but that would be my understanding as well. All right, do we have any further questions? If not, we really encourage you to submit your public comments. We would have a high interest in what you have to say. Oh, Nancy says there is no charge to use Therap, but providers will need to bring their own device. We won't pay for tablets, etc. Thank you, Nancy. And I see a message from Melissa that Nancy would have to unmute yourself. Have you, is that an option, Nancy? I think that Nancy is having trouble with that. All right. But there's no other new questions in the chat. So we are going to wrap up this session and thank you all for attending. And we look forward to your comments. Everyone have a great day. Bye bye.